yo, what up though? It's your girl, Hollywood Haskins. Welcome back. Oh my God. I know I have been the absolute worst and I'm so sorry, okay? So sorry. It's been crazy busy and things have just been different. I've been kind of trying to figure out, do I want to do YouTube? Do I want to focus on Instagram? Do I want to focus on my business? Do I want to focus on my weight loss journey? And really it's just kind of been like girl <laughs> you better just focus on it all at the same time and that's kind of what i've been doing so youtube has been getting the shaft and so i'm so sorry i promise i'm about to get better i promise i promise i promise actually today i have like several videos to update for you um so some of that's gonna be swimsuit hauls i know y'all love the swimsuit hauls and of course i have a trip coming up this saturday so i have some swimsuits to definitely uh show you i actually am gonna show you guys my brand new wardrobe i got like a lot to show you guys a lot to update you on um a lot has happened but today i'm gonna start us off with an update on my back lipo. Okay, yes, I got back lipo. Okay, so you guys already know, let's recap because I know people would be like, well, dang, what all has she had did? Okay, so let's recap. I had a tummy tuck in February of 2020, I think that is, whenever the pandemic started. So I had a tummy tuck then. And then later that year, November, I had a breast reduction. And so that's all I had. So tummy tuck and breast reduction. Then I went on my own weight loss journey where I was uh, dieting pretty heavily. I was able to lose 70 pounds on my own, which was amazing. Just made my tummy tuck and my breast reduction look that much better. So went down from 280 down to like 217-ish. It was crazy, but... um so that that was pretty cool so my if you've been following me for at least a little bit of time then you know my weight loss journey has been very hybrid very like mix of cosmetic surgery doing the work going to the gym a little bit of more cosmetic surgery a little bit more doing the work so it's been very very hybrid um in order for me to get the body that i love and and adore so um so I won't say that there's been any one way that has made it be um, better or worse. I think all of the things collectively have worked together. And at every stage that I've done something, I have loved my body. It looks really good. And I just wanted to enhance it and make it better and continue to just make it better. And I think this version of me, I think once y'all see it, y'all gonna understand. This is giving, giving. <laughs> Um, and so, nonetheless, I had did a lot of the work. A lot of the weight came off in my thighs, which I was not happy about because y'all know I had a size 50 inch hips. 50 inches is what my hips were. And so, I'm down to a 44. So, my hips are 44. So, I lost about six inches on my hips, which is all good. Um, that wasn't where I wanted the weight to come from. I wanted to come from my back because the back rolls was hitting heavy. Y'all don't understand. The back rolls looked like I could put them on the table for Thanksgiving. Working out, I have been doing the work. And the truth of the matter is, I felt like those were just not going to be the things that were going to... That's not where it was going to come off at. Um, I might have been able to make minimal adjustments to it but the portion of where I really hated it at that was like some stubborn fat so I decided to get back lipo and I decided to go with laser lipo which was completely different than what I was anticipating um prior or like it was completely different than anything that I had did before Okay, so I had made a decision that I'm going to go with laser light bulb because I was like, okay, well, it's going to be safer. You know, the algorithm was algorithming, you know, it started saying, get that back fat off of you, go to Sonabello. And I was like, what is this? Okay, what is this? So I made an appointment to go to Sonabello Troy, which is in Metro Detroit. 
Um, and I made the appointment and when you go in, you actually don't meet with the doctor first. You meet with a, like a practitioner manager kind of deal, like an office manager. And they're there to just kind of, one, make sure that you understand what they do, understand uh, if you even have the ability to get the surgery or not, or um, proceed with any of it and figure out what's the best um, course of action, right? So it, it's a little bit of a gatekeeper, but as a business owner, I understand that they're kind of like flushing out some of the bullshit, okay? So they're trying to make sure that before they even get you in there with their doctors. One eternity later. Okay, so I met with them and they saw right off the bat how serious I was. They was like, oh, sis is serious. I was like, look, I went in with a number in mind that if they could do it for that number, then uh, I would go ahead and move forward with it. No, the initial number they gave me was higher than where I wanted to be. They base it off BMI. They're pretty straight to the point, pretty flat out. Like your BMI is this, you want this area done, this is the price. So um, it was pretty like formula driven, pretty simple and easy. And so um, my BMI is like 36 or something like that. And so in order to get like one area done, which was my bra line, it was far beyond where I wanted to be. I was like, yeah, no, nah, it's a no for me. I talked to the doctor. So she went and talked to the doctor and then a the doctor came in and was like, well, let me look and see before y'all get to talk about you coming in in four days. Like, let me figure out if that even makes sense. And so he looked at my back and he was like, I could understand why you would want to get rid of this. I'm like holding about three inches worth of fat. So... I could see why you want to get rid of it. He was like, you know, your body is very, very contoured um, and very shapely and curvy. And so I could see why you want to get rid of it. And so he was like, but in all honesty, if I just did your bra line, the waistline and your upper back is going to become more pronounced. And so in my opinion, you actually should hit all three or else it won't look that good. And I was like, mm. Okay, so it was already borderline on my price range for the one area. So I was like, mm, well, let's just go ahead and hang it up then because it's a no for me. Well, anyhow, we had a, a good conversation and we talked through it, talked about it. And they were like, all right, cool. This is our bottom line number that we could do. And they actually have pretty awesome um, payment plans, which I thought was really cool. So they offer Alfion and Care Credit. Alfion's credit... Um, the interest rate was only like 10% or something like that. It, it was something really, really low, like even lower than a credit card. So I thought that that was actually really good. So the payment plan ended up being somewhere around like $100 a month. I'm not bullshitting y'all. Y'all know I don't talk numbers because, because I don't want you going in like, oh, we were on Hollywood's channel and she told us that you could do it for $2,000. No, I don't need y'all going in there harassing my doctors like that. So whatever your price is going to be your price, but I can only give you like my experience. So we were able to get the payment plan somewhere around like 120 bucks a month. And I was like, to, to get rid of these back rolls, $120 a month, I'm down. Sign me up. Let's do it. Next Tuesday, you want me to come in? And so that's what happened. So I came in that following Tuesday. Okay. My opinion. They do the procedure right inside of their office. Um, and it is performed by a cosmetic surgeon, a actual doctor, not like a nurse or anything like that. Um, and so, and you're awake during the process. Okay. Now I'm gonna give y'all some compare and contrast right here, because this part was very, very different for me. Tummy tuck, breast reduction, they put you to sleep, they slice you up, do all that they are gonna do. So being awake, so anesthesia is one of the, the most risky portions of the surgery. So getting rid of that already kind of takes a ton of risk off the table. And so that was another reason why I wanted to go this route. And so um, they give you like a little cocktail of pills. Uh, it's none but like two Percocets, some Tylenol, a Xanax, an antibiotic, right? Like it really actually wasn't that heavy of a 
of, of a pill dosage for me. I thought that it was going to be similar to like going to the dentist where you're awake, but they give you something that's like making you woozy or it wasn't like that at all. They give you more like a pill cocktail to kind of just put you in a calm state. It's not you awake. Okay. You're up. And so after they gave me my pill cuts, well, before they did that, they, you know, marked up my body. All right, so I'm all marked up. You can see my back is where we're gonna focus all our energy at. You can see this big old lung that's right here. We're gonna see if we can minimize that as much as humanly possible. They shot in some numbing stuff to um, numb certain areas where they're gonna do the the incisions so we should see each uh put where all of they were gonna hit at they took pictures all that stuff so i'm gonna show you the pictures of when dr al marked me all up and stuff i loved dr al okay i cannot say enough good stuff about dr al i absolutely loved him he was the bomb.com he was so fun and he made me feel so good um he backed for the other team so i feel like he looked at our bodies in a different kind of way, which I actually really loved and adored because he was like, okay, girl, we're going to get you together here, there, and everywhere, and we're going to make you, you know, uh, love your body or whatever, whatever. So he was really cool. So shout out to Dr. Al. Love him. Follow him on Instagram as well. I'll drop his IG down in my um, comments or in the captions. So definitely follow Dr. Al on IG. Um and so after they mark you all up, you take your pictures, they give you this cocktail. I'm sitting there waiting for it to kick in like, I'm supposed to be high yet? Because I'm not high yet. And they would say, well, you're just going to take the edge off. I'm going to take the edge off. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> and so then they like stab you in a couple spots where they're going to um, go in at and they numb those areas, right? So they're putting some type of saline or something in to numb those spots. And so they do that before you go in, I guess more so, so you don't feel the uh, needle going in when they're going to put the real, real, real numbing stuff in. And so they just kind of numb those spots up or whatever, whatever. Okay. Fast forward, we on the table. I'm a trooper. Okay. Like, let me just make that all the way known. I am a trooper. Okay. My pain tolerance is high. I can rap with the best of them, but this, I'll never do it again. I'll never, ever do it again. It didn't hurt. It wasn't like that, but you are awake, okay? You are woke. And so when they're like putting the rest of the numbing stuff in, so what they ended up telling me is that each bag of numbing stuff is actually four pounds and they put nine bags inside of me, okay? So remember that when I circle back to this week later and I'm 10 pounds heavier, very ghetto, okay? But that's why. So they put all these bags of saline and uh, numbing solution in you to numb all of this stuff, okay? But you... You feel it. You're awake. <laughs> so it doesn't hurt. But like imagine like some sleep paralysis almost where somebody's stabbing you. You know they're stabbing you. It doesn't hurt, but you know that they're stabbing you. And so that was where my mental process was, was I'm laying on this table and I can feel the jabs, feel it. Like they're not painful, but I can, I can feel it. Okay. So I think if they didn't give me the Xanax, I would have jumped off the table because my nerves were just like, oh my God, am I paying for him to kill me? I'm laying here and I'm letting him kill me. Um, there were some spots that were more uncomfortable. So of course, like, you know, your body's going to numb in phases and that kind of stuff. And so there were some spots that were less numb than others. So there were some spots where you could feel it, but it was more of a, um, like a pinch. Um, so it was uncomfortable, but it wasn't unbearable. So it wasn't unbearable. Um, and Dr. Al and my nurse, they were super sweet. They're like, you're doing so good. Oh my God. Like, we're almost there. I can see your waistline contouring. It's looking great. <laughs> so they're affirming me the whole way because I'm like, oh, 
Ah, mm, oh my god. Oh my god. Mm. I can't. Get out. Oh my so, god. The the procedure itself was interesting. I feel like it only lasted maybe like 20, 25 minutes. It wasn't that long. It didn't take that long. And so I'm going to show you how much they got out in that amount of time. So like two big old things worth of fat. Like it was a lot that he got out in that time frame. And so, um, so yeah, so that part is like really, really dope that I got to see like the fat afterwards. Like you slide off the table, you walk out the room. It's like... It's really interesting to have a procedure like that done and really genuinely be awake and like alert and going afterwards. And so, um, so yeah, so that is kind of how that part went. Um, and then afterwards they like bandaged you up and they put on your uh, compression garment, which in my opinion didn't really compress um too much it was more like a light compression more to like kind of hold you in i guess now i'm hippie and i got a lot of thighs and a lot of booty so for me i felt like it was compressing on some certain spots and not on others but it felt like it was about to cut my hip off and so i actually feel like i they had to order me a custom size because of how i'm shaped so i had to get a custom one or whatever whatever but you know that's all good that's neither here nor there so they don't let you drive home someone has to come and pick you up because they didn't drop perks in you and all of this stuff and plus to be honest you don't really want to drive home because you are kind of in some pain so one of the questions that i've been getting a lot is what is the pain level how much pain it is first and foremost i tell everybody who if that's your first question to me you shouldn't be getting no procedure done nowhere because if you are like is it gonna hurt like they're slicing your body up of course it's gonna hurt what you mean yeah it hurts it's it yeah yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. It, it hurt. It don't feel good, okay? Does not feel good. So um, I go home. Um, I rest up. I'm I'm able to still kind of walk around, do what I need to do. I'm a little groggy, but I'm not, you know, out of it or anything like that. Now, the next day, I feel like I got hit by a mag drug. So I feel like day two is a little rough. Now, they give you a, quite a bit of um, stuff to take the the edge off. I feel like they do give you a sufficient amount of medicine. So I I had some codeine. I had muscle relaxers. Um, I had Zofran for nausea. They gave me some holistic stuff to help with bruising and stuff like that. So I feel like they covered a lot of ground as far as medicine goes to make sure that you are comfortable. And I do feel like that helped. So day two was rougher than all of the days, in my opinion. Um, so I just kind of chilled on day two. I ain't really do much of nothing. But I was I was back up and walking around. I encouraged walking around because um, I actually feel like that helps you heal faster. And all of the procedures that I've done, walking around is really important. So I did still get up and walk around, um, that kind of thing. And then day three... Day three, um, I was better. So each day was incrementally better. By day three, I was back driving. Actually, by day two, I was back driving. I actually drove somewhere on day two. <laughs> day three, I actually was at a conference. Um, I bled all over my clothes because you're still draining. So, um, so you are still draining by like day two and day three. But by day four, I wasn't really draining anymore. I was able to get rid of all of the little itty bitty incisions were already gone. I was bruised really bad. Now y'all see, I'm fair skinned. I'm a sister, but I am fair skinned. So I had bruises, bruises. Like I look like somebody had beat my ass. Um, I'll show you because I took pictures. Um, it looked like I got beat up. And so I had a lot of bruises. So they were really uh, warm to touch and painful and that kind of thing. Um, I was swollen. So actually, when I got up and I took off. Okay, so when you take off your compression garment for the first time as well, you should lay down because you actually get a little dizzy. So um, I forgot what they told me that's called. But like once you take your compressions off for the first time, 
you should actually be sitting down or laying down so you give your your body and your head time to catch up to the blood rush um because you can fall so i don't want you to that to happen to you but i was dizzy right after i took it off and so um anyhow where was i going hmm. I don't know, my brain has left the building for a minute there. Anyhow, <laughs> so uh, the first time I took my compression garment off, and of course you are like geek to look in the mirror, like see what, it... no, don't do it. It's discouraging, it's disheartening. In fact, when I looked in the mirror for the first time, I was like, am I bigger? Am I bigger than when I went in? I gotta be bigger, cause this is ghetto, like what the fuck? And so then I got on a scale, oh! Don't get on the scale, okay? So I went into this procedure at 219. When I got on the scale, it was 229. 229. Oh, my God. The heartbreak that sunk into my body when I saw the scale. It's perfectly normal. A lot of the fluid is still inside of you. It's perfectly normal to be heavier. It's perfectly normal to be swollen. It's perfectly normal to not see the results right away. It is disheartening though. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. So, yes, I was like, this was some bush. I was I was real not happy the first couple days. Um, and so then you start to see it. Like, I could start to see where some of the swelling starting to go down, where I'm starting to see some of the contour at. I'm starting to see it a little bit. But for the most part, it's only been seven days. So this is day seven. Um, so I wanted to get y'all this update in quick and, and get it to you because I'm going to plan on giving you updates every two weeks because I hear that over the next six to eight weeks, I'm going to see it go down dramatically. They do expect that I should be smaller than the 219 once it's all said and done. But I actually thought that it was like pretty quick in the results. It's actually not. They said that six to eight weeks, you usually are able to see what's been done. But actually like all the way into three months, you might still continuously be seeing um, some of the effects. Um, so it's not an immediate thing at all. And so nonetheless, so I'm still heavier right now. You can't really truly see the difference. I'm going to show you some before and after so that you can kind of see the day that I was in the doctor's office and then my one week follow up for my, my checkup. It's not a big difference. In fact, it almost looks the same. Maybe a little bit worse, maybe a little bit better in some spots. Um, but it, it definitely is not showing yet. Now, I leave to go out the country on Saturday. So, I am drinking my water. I ordered me some comfrey oil. Um, I am doing more compressions, drinking my lemon water, and just trying to stay hydrated. And I'm doing some cold compresses so that I can get some of the swelling to go down because I'm pretty swollen, actually. And so I'm also supposed to go get a lymphatic drainage massage because I can feel the pockets um, of liquid. So you can, you can feel it, too, in some of the spots. And so I'm trying to get that to drain as well. So they definitely were like a lymphatic drainage massage would be good. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to definitely show y'all some pictures and some videos, but I'm going to also post you a swimsuit haul that I did like day five of the surgery. So during the surgery, I mean, well, during this week, I also got some swimsuits and I did the haul swollen and all. So you're going to see even still, I think since my last YouTube video, you guys will see my body has dramatically changed um, since my last YouTube video. I think my last YouTube video, you guys, I was at 245 still. So I haven't talked to you guys in a long time, man. And I hate that. But I'm going to do better, okay? I swear I'm going to do better. So um, my body has changed a lot since the last YouTube haul that you guys have seen. So um, the swimsuits that I'm going to show you from... Uh, Shein that I did 
recently they're actually during this week when i'm still swollen and stuff so i'm hoping to be able to show you another haul in another week so you can kind of see my clothes fitting a little differently and that kind of thing so i'm working on those things and i'm gonna be posting them within the next week or so um but as of right now that's kind of where we're at with things and so just stay tuned rock with me i got you we're gonna get better at posting videos on a regular basis i know y'all love me i miss y'all too so it's coming but um i'm gonna drop some some pictures for you to be able to see for the next video and i'm hoping to be able to post that next week all right thanks for rocking with your girl hollywood i look forward to talking to you guys soon peace out